is coming. I'm not hearing you. Tell your neighbor a good news is coming. Who believe a good news is coming? Amen. And the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. This morning I want to preach on a topic I titled The Baggages We Carry. Somebody say the baggages. Okay, say the baggage we carry. Say the baggage we carry. Now let me say something. Every child of God. Okay, let me remove the word child of God. Every man born of a woman has the baggage he or she is carrying. And I've discovered one thing the baggages we carry is capable of stop, stopping your miracle and stopping your race to the kingdom. When somebody wants to travel, maybe you want to travel to the United States. My brother, you can't go empty handed. Is that not correct? You must go with a baggage. Eh? One could be hand luggage, your baggages, and you know, they want to wear it and know what is the weight, then they will check your baggages in. Now, when you carry this baggage, then when they ask you, who is the owner of this baggage, you will say it's me. Is that not correct? So the baggage belongs to you. And in the area of life that we live today, there are baggages everybody carries. I don't want to mention the name of a church, but I could tell you something from some of the churches or whatever that has been running, there are some people who do not believe that they have a baggage they carry. But let me announce to you, whether you're a pastor or a bishop or a reverend or a prophet or apostle or a businessman, a father and a mother, a governor or a president, no matter whatever you are, there is a baggage you are carrying. The only difference between the baggage is that some are bigger baggages and some are smaller baggages. But everybody born of a woman has a baggage he or she is carrying. And when it talks about the race of the kingdom, you have a baggage you are carrying that you must always try to offload if you want to run a race onto the eternal life. If you carry a baggage and maybe your own baggage is small, your own baggage is small, then you went and relaxed because you think it's very small. And at the end of the day, you began to relax, believing that after the rapture or at the end, heaven at last. My brother, you will only preach heaven at last on the earth. And at the end of the day, you shall not be seen and will not be seen in heaven. So it takes grace, commitment unto the things of God for you to offload your baggage and run a race to the kingdom of the kingdom. The Selenian says, abstain from any kind of evil. Take me to first Thessalonians chapter 5, 19 to 22. He said, abstain from any kind, all kinds of, that means you are not expected to carry one baggage. You are expected to offload all the what? All the what? I can't hear you, church. All the what? Baggages. Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Yes. From verse uh, 19. Stand 19. From 19 to 22. Quench not the spirit. Uh, quench not the spirit. Do not allow what is in your baggage to quench the spirit of God in your life. Despise not prophesying. Uh -huh. Prove all things. Prove all things. Hold fast uh -huh. that which is good. Uh -huh. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I want you, that's where my reference is coming from. I want you to underline that particular word. He said, abstain from what? All appearance of what? Evil. All. Underline the word all, which means you should not allow even one 
to be involved. He said, abstain from all appearance of what? Now let me tell you. Apart from the baggages of of the kingdom race, there are equally earthly baggages that has to do with things that concern you. Is that correct? Hello? In terms of saying you have issues you need to settle, like school are opening now. There are people that their own is they want to pay for school fees. They want to pay for house rent. They want to pay for what again? Huh? They want to pay for maybe the rent of their office and so on. Now, if you look at there is one person obtaining about three or four of them. But sometimes there are people their own is in the place where they live, they are paid for the rent or they, it's their own. But the only package they are carrying is that school are opening. They want to pay for what? The school fees. So, the package of one person that is carrying school fees, house rent, office rent, is it the same thing with the one that is only carrying? So, baggages can never be what? Equal. But this morning, what we are discussing is not the baggage of the things you do here on earth. We are discussing the baggage of sin. A lot of us, a lot of people are carrying baggages. And the Bible made it so clear. Say, all I've seen and come short of what? I can't hear you. All I've seen and come short of what? It didn't say some have seen. It said all. That means everybody is what? A sinner. And the worst sin a man can do is a sin unknown what? I've taught you something like that. Is that correct? The worst sin a man can do is what? Unknown sin. Because you will never even believe at the first place that that is what? A sin. But there is once you will see, you can be a fornicator, you know, and you repent of it. That's correct. But there are ones you do that even in your head, you are not aware that that thing is the sin. And that is why the kind of baggage you carry today can interpret who you are and where you are coming from. Take me to this scripture, sir. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Okay, don't worry. Take me to Psalm 38, verse 18. Let's see the cry of David. Romans 6, 23 said that the wages of sin is what? Is what? But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Is that correct? Now, I want you to make this analysis in two ways. If the gift of God is eternal life and the wages of sin is death, now here, we are, I don't think we are talking about the physical death. When you have eternal life, that means there is eternal condemnation. Is that what that means? Is that what that means, church? So that means if you have eternal condemnation, which means that's an eternal death. The same way you have eternal life, the same way you have what? Eternal death. So if the wages of sin is there, that means every man or woman carrying a baggage of sin will try to offload it in the feet of Jesus Christ before the rapture. Amen, church. And sometimes the worst part of it is that a man or a woman could even carry a sin that you are not aware that you are carrying. And that's the most dangerous of it. Then if they tell you, say, no, 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 I'm not aware. I want to, I want to give an illustration this morning. Get me my baggages. Let me show you something. This war is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Ah. Give me the big one here. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. I have a mother, just hope in glory land. This world is not my home. I'm 
just a passing Give me that one. another package and here it is another package now we have how many packages here five and all of them are not what they are not equal they are not even the same but they are packages they have the same name packages now hear this there are people in their life today when you look at this package they have unforgiveness spirit but they carry Bible and preach in the streets too. Hello? I am not talking about those now who are too far from the kingdom race. I'm talking about those who equally claim they preach the righteousness too. That when you come inside somebody who claims he's a born again, you see the baggage is carrying or she's carrying, you will see unforgiveness. And when somebody has unforgiveness, that person must be what? A gossiper. When he refuses to forgive you, he will always want to discuss you when issues of such arises. And when somebody is gossiping you, that means he does not like you. He can do anything to do what? Stop you. And that person what? Begin to do what? Now, I want you to understand the perspective of witchcraft. Witchcraft is not when you go to a native doctor and began to own some maybe evil things and fetish. When a wicked soul rises over your life to make sure he breaks you down, to make sure he talks ills about you, to make sure he stops the assets of your success, that person is what? Which is a witchcraft. You know what people interpret a witchcraft is somebody who appears and disappears. My brother, if you disappear now and appear in my room, you will die. You won't disappear. Again. But the worst witchcraft that can happen in your life is somebody who uses his tongue or her tongue to do what? Destroy your person. That person is a more deadly word. Witchcraft. And there are people too, when you go close to them today, they are born again. Claim, understand the language, 
They are born again. What? Clean. But in their package, they will never forgive you. An unforgiveness spirit will lead you to where? Hell. And inside them, they gossip what? About you. And immediately they gossip about you. If they see anything that can stop you, they will do what? They will never want your success. They will always want you to do what? Go down. That person is what? And anybody carrying the baggage of unforgiveness, gossip and witchcraft can never see the kingdom of... I don't even I'm talking here. All right, sir. Now there is another package which is a little smaller and that one is stealing. Stealing by tricks. People elected in government offices, they steal past um, uh, tax money, pay tax money, the money you pay as your tax and when they are stealing, they are stealing confidently because they believe they are in power. There are some of us that, 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 that you don't that, even know what you're doing is stealing, but you 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 just think ten maybe your father sent you a message, your God sent you a message, gave you ten thousand, you bought the thing for seven thousand, you didn't return the three thousand, you didn't even tell him that there is a balance of ten thousand three thousand. That thing you're carrying is a package of what? When the kingdom will come, you shall not be seen. I don't know if I'm talking here. Now there is one that is so rampant everywhere, which is the baggage of what? Disobedience. Disobedience. For instance, in this church, if there is a place we pasted, switch off your phone. If there is a place of such, which I don't think, I don't think we'll have it in this particular grid. Then, then you come into church, you read it, you are aware. There is two different things that you never saw that it, but you saw it, you came into your church, you leave your phone on, when it rings, you go out and pick it and answer it. That is the spirit of what? Disobedience. Now, some people will say, but there is no place in the Bible it is written you should off your... Now, in every gathering of the saints, which happens to be a church, there is somebody God has positioned in that altar. So, when he gives an instruction, you disobey it, you equally disobey who? And you will not know that that is a disobedience. That's why in some churches, a lot of people do not obey ushers in those churches. Because what usher is doing is the direct is from the altar. So you say, sit here. You say, no, no, I can't sit here, my friend. Kai. That's what? Disobedience. I don't know if I'm saying something. And these are baggages you carry and you do not know you're doing what? Carry them because you came into church, they told you, you said, no, 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 you began to do, you saw, you, you don't see that as a sin. So even when you're praying, you can't ask forgiveness of sin because in you, you didn't see that what? As a sin. So you're carrying a baggage that even you do not know that you're carrying a baggage. And when you carry such baggage of disobedience, you will never do what? You will not do what? And there is the one that is in rampant now. Which is the sin of what? Justice. Somebody said justice. The sin of what? That scripture I think is in uh, Ephesians, right? Ephesians, uh, I think chapter 1. Let me get that scripture. Before I, uh, yeah, Ephesians chapter 5. Not chapter 1, chapter 5. Verse 1 to 6. Ephesians chapter 5. From verse 1 to 6. Be ye therefore followers of God as be, dear children. Be ye followers of God. Uh -huh. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us. Uh -huh. And had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Uh -huh. But fornication and uncleanness uh -huh. or covetousness, uh -huh. let it not be once named among you. Let it not be most named among you. As become saints. Mm -hmm. Neither filthiness, mm -hmm. nor foolish talking, uh -huh. nor jesting. Now, foolish talking or what? Or jesting. It's okay. Now, foolish talking or what? Should not be seen among saints. Do you know this baggage is baggage a lot of popular pastors are carrying without knowing they are carrying it? When you bring a comedian in your altar, you are doing what? That's jesting. That's foolish talking. The comedian will come to your altar. Pastor wants church to grow. He wants people, when you see that, so so, I won't mention their name, so so person is coming, is somebody you wants to see because he cracks you up, he makes you laugh. You will run to that church. You know me so? You want to 
Watch. So, it's a strategy for church to fool, but a strategy to go to hell. So, you are in a position to choose which of the strategies do you want? want. Now, you, a commander will come to the altar. He will tell you huh, that one day he was walking in the street, he saw where Jesus is dancing, Makosa, Makosa. Everybody laugh. <laughs> He will say, ah, ah, papa, ah, mama. He's talking to the preacher. So, ah, papa, mama. Ah, you people are too beautiful. In fact, the way they see yourself, you don't beautiful. Pass Mary. Pass Jesus. The way they see you. Now, leave your inside. The way I never see how you look. Everybody, ah, in the church. And a lot of pastors does that today. Jesting and what? Bible says, let it not be seen among you, the foolish talk and what? No comedian will, no, mal, uh, not malam, no affair. It will be difficult for you to see an affair of a Muslim bring a comedian in the mosque. I don't know if it is author they call it. Is it author? I don't know what they call it. Where they pray, they are author where they pray. If, have anybody seen one? I've never seen. If anybody have seen, you tell me. Let me know. They can never try that. They can only try that in events. They can never try that in the altar where they worship, where they call a sacred place. Another thing is, there are three kinds of or form, so many altars. Another thing is, when you invite a comedian in the altar of a native. Doctor, will you go? <laughs> go carry that money. Say, okay. <laughs> punish you. You won't kill me. Me. Because that time when you come to the altar, you see the design of satanic design. He said, okay, where will I do the comment? He said, he said, here. Yeah. I said, okay, how much did you pay? He said, one million. I beg. I see the talk. He said, send me your account number. <laughs> Let me trust. Ah, you know, do it. He said, I know, I know, I know. But in the church, because grace abounds, then you begin to abuse the grace. Because you know, it's no longer the old time where anything you do can lead you to death. But now it is in the time grace has abounded, then you want to now use it. And a lot of pastors today will not make heaven. Why? Because they are carrying the baggage of disobedience and what? Justice. If you know you have gone to a church and during the service time where God is worship, you see comedians come to your altar and begin to joke and you were laughing. Let me see. Let me see. Just tell me, doesn't one, two, three. Oh, oh my boy, don't do it. Will I play it? And that all of you were laughing, clapping, laughing. Correct. Were you laughing too? And you were jumping up. Can you remember one joke the person said? Don't mention the person's name, but can you remember one joke the person said? Huh? You can't remember. Who can remember one joke they said and you laughed? Wait now. So if you're not preaching, what they do? Who can remember one joke? One, one. One, one you had. <laughs> Be very fast now. Let, let me hear the joke, the, the one you had. From the altar. Yes, uh, what did he say? The commander was talking about the pastor's clothes. The pastor's, pastor's clothes. clothes. Yes. <laughs> it's very expensive. Now, who knows if. The commandant said, if I come to borrow this school, will you borrow it to me? <laughs> it was just laughing. 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 He said the pastor's clothes is... Very expensive. You know he's having the pastor? Yes, sir. And the wife, that the wife, the hater is very big. He's very is big. covering people from back. Covering, covering people, people from seeing God. Yes. That's correct. That comedian is a good one. No? A very good one. <laughs> the guy just came to the altar and God entered his heart and he began to preach. <laughs> Amen. Eternal, eternal, I say eternal, eternal, oh yeah, I want to live eternal, oh yeah, God save my soul, oh yeah, I want to live eternal. This one, this one, 
You know, if you're carrying this one, it looks small. Is that correct? You're not carrying something big. But you're carrying what? Malice. You know, there are some people who are carrying such. You, you, you believe, you know, he goes to church. He will even arrive before pastor. He will clean the church. He will preach the gospel. He will do this. He will do that. But when he notices maybe the pastor is trying to favor somebody more than him or her, he will no longer be happy. Maybe there is one day the person insulted him or her. He's no longer happy. Then instead of him or her to overlook it and know that he is working for God and focus the cross, the person will carry what? There's a lot of a lot of you here where they carry malice in this branch, Abi. Eh? Eh? Abi. There's one of our branch. I won't mention the branch. Our resident pastor there and the deputy pastor was carrying malice. I beg, tell me how they go preach. When they call me, I told them I won't visit that branch again. They were looking at me. I said, no, no serious. Pastor, no be saying that. Even workers, no, even members, as long as you're a child of God, there are things you need to grow up. Carry my, you know what it is? Allowing something to kill you. Now you, they die. Now you, now you. Now you. Now you. And there are people here that everything that consigns it the race, you're doing it well. You, you try to live a holy life. You try to be yourself. You, you try to live exemplary life. You try to be who God has sent you to be. But you are carrying one small baggage that will destroy you. This one's too small. You see this one? Businessmen and women here. And I see this one. Oganoko eh? said this uh, Chia. Chia, I bought 15,000. Now, lying at 2,000, they buy a month. All the business people here, they laugh. Not true now. I bought the 15,000. What is the target of the lies? So that he can sell 17,000 and make good gain. He will know that the 15,000 is gain. 2,000 is what they bought it. So he will first of all lie on it. What does it stop you to say, I bought it 2,000, but adding my expenses, bringing it in and all that, the thing is collected, and the last price that we sell is 17,000. That is truth. And when you maintain the truth, you still get your money. And this one is the one that happens across the world that people do not even see. Lies. You lie. Even on the common... In fact, even before some people leave the church today, they will... They will lie. Somebody gave you an appointment for two. Prophet is still in the altar by two. And that thing you're going, you want to go. Uh, and you don't want to go if the service has not closed. So now, the person started calling you. Go outside and answer. Where are you now? I'm on my way. Which way? Which way? Hold up. Hold up. There's one that answered call where I was one day. Where are you? He said he's in the toilet. I said, good on you. <laughs> in fact, this phone itself has phone is the university no, foundation of uh, lies in the upgrade A university so I've been calling you really, calling my phone, I didn't see it and I lie, and I lie, yes. no one has that. And those kind of baggage you carry, you don't call them anything. That is why it looks small. You don't even see it as what? As a sin. The only one you count as a sin is fornication. Maybe those elaborate one. Let me shock you. You see those carrying the level of baggage of such. Eh? You will be shocked that those people will repent and do what? Make heaven. There is every tendency that anybody who commits such magnitude of sin my change and make what? But you see you that commit this small one who does not even believe that is a sin is having more dangerous opportunity to make heaven. Because you don't even see it as a sin first. To confess. Then you do what? You carry it. Will you make heaven? Will a liar make heaven? 
And if you're a liar, who is your father? If you know you're a liar, yeah, let, let me say no. Who's going to answer me here? Everybody. 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 Look at this people. They say even me, I lie too. They say everybody lie. Kai. Oh. That is a lamb. That is fair and dead. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. In 011, in the good, in the sweet, in the sweet, by and by, by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet, thank you, Lord. by and by, oh yeah, we, we shall, shall meet on the beautiful shore. Shall sing of the beautiful shore. Yes, oh, the melodious song on the blessed and a spiritual sorrow no more. Not a sign for the blessed in the sweet, in the sweet. In the sweet, in the sweet, oh yeah. One more time, verse three. Oh yes, to a bountiful Father above. Oh yeah, we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of. Oh yeah, and the blessings are the whole world in the sweet, in the sweet, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. Oh yeah. And be ready to drop your baggage in the feet of Christ. If such thing has not happened, your race to the kingdom will be in vain. I was speaking to one of my brothers that works in one of the state governments. In fact, I works in the state government of Lagos. He said to me, He said to me, He said, Prophet. I have, I have discovered, discovered that, that there, there is, is nothing in this world. world. He said, if I have one million in my account, I am comfortable. He has made money. On. Where he lives is his house here. The home he has is a big boy. He said, I have discovered there is nothing one. That the major purpose of all these things is the one race. No matter the car, no matter all the things you do and how you do them, no matter how you do them, no matter how the race is, your focus matters. And what is the focus for you to make heaven? Not for you to buy a car. Surely God will make providence for you in provisions for you in all the things you want here. 
But the major thing for a child of God is the focus of the race. So that at the end, heaven at last. Some of us are carrying baggages of unforgiveness, gossip, witchcraft, stealing, disobedience, jesting, malice, lies, such kind of so many baggages we are carrying. There are millions of baggages. Which one are you carrying? And what is your heart of submission to God? 